Chapter 10, Drawing Annotation. This chapter covers microstation annotation and placing text in design files. To this point, all tools covered placed, manipulate, or modified geometry in a design file. Although most of the drawings consist of elements such as lines, arcs, and circles, that alone does not fully describe the drawing. The text tools provide the missing link by placing non-geometric information in the drawing in the form of descriptive text. Text elements are useful for including labels other than dimensions in the model. As an element type, text differs in several ways from other elements. The following attributes apply exclusively to text and text node elements. Fonts. Text is placed in the active font. Justification. Text is aligned in a specific way with respect to the data point that positions its origin. Text size. Text characters have a height and width. However, if annotation lock is on, text automatically scales by the annotation scale factor, which is set in the models properties dialog. So FDOT delivers a customized set of true type font TTF files to ensure text uniformity between applications supporting TTF fonts and legibility of FDOT CAD drawings. A single true type font file may contain thousands of characters. It's information that you didn't necessarily need to know, but there you have it. The F.TrueType true type font file contains special characters used by designers not normally found in standard publishing fonts. These special characters can be accessed from the text editor. We're going to go over that. Let's look at the text task. Just like all tasks, you can open it up as a toolbox, right click and select what options you'd like to show. I'm going to turn off several of these that we're not going to talk about. So what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about place text. It's the basic text tool that we use to place text. Place note, which is different than text because a note is text with a leader line and a terminator arrow. Edit text, which is the tool you use to edit existing text. Spell checker, it's always important to check your spelling. Change case, this allows you to change the case of the text, uppercase, lowercase, etc title case. Display text attributes displays the attributes of existing text. Match text attributes will take those text attributes and match them and then you can use the change text attributes tool to change existing text to the matched attributes. You may recall something similar in the uh, change element attributes tool. We had match element attributes and change element attributes and then we have fill in enter data field. That fills in enter data fields. We will talk about those just briefly. Now, if you click on the place text task, you're going to see two things. You're going to see the text editor window, which is a WYSIWYG window. That's to say what you see is what you get. And then you'll see that the tool settings dialog has changed to the place text dialog. As it's alluded to in that intro of this chapter, F dot does deliver some true type fonts, but we also deliver text styles. Those text styles are delivered through a DGN library. That DGN library is in the f.ss4 software. It lives on the server or on your local drive if you have a standalone in the resources styles. Re resources DGN live styles folder, things something like that. Let's find out. Go to f.ss4 resources DGN libs styles. Okay. F.styles is where all those text styles live. Please do not edit the text styles in the DGN Lib. They are there and standardized for a reason. However, if you really do want to edit your text styles, you can create a new DGN Lib with additional text styles and place that in your SIMB folder of your project. And that'll get picked up by MicroStation through F.SS4. That's for additional text styles. Give them a different name other than the standard F dot text styles, otherwise they'll overwrite them and things will get crazy. So that's all you need to know. Um, the other thing is with those text styles, th this chapter was much, much longer before when you had to set up all sorts of, of settings for your text and follow certain standards. Right now, if you use the F dot text styles, which come from this drop down menu, you'll be able to place text to standard without having to change any settings or knowing too much about the nuts and bolts of the place text tool. But let's talk about the tool settings window. The method is the essentially the, the way the text is placed. By origin is the most typical way to place text. 
Um, there are some other options, and I'll read them out to you. Uh, fitted dynamically places a single line of text fit between two data points. View independent is similar to by origin, except that the text does not rotate with a view rotation. Once placed, text stays at the same orientation regardless of view orientation. That's a little crazy. Fitted view independent combines the fitted view and independent views. Above element places text above a line or segment of a line, string, shape, or multi-line at the active text settings at the same angle as the line segment at a distance equal to the active line spacing. So your active line spacing is the space between lines of text, so this would place it above an element, the distance of the active line spacing. Below element does the same thing, except it's below the line segment or element, and it is indeed active distance, uh, that's equal, to, equal to the distance of the active line spacing. On element places a line of text directly on a line string, shape, b-spline curve, or multi-line at the active text settings. Along element places text above or below an element each character is placed as a single text element that is a component of a graphic group. The characters are placed at the active text settings at a distance equal to the active line spacing. And then word wrap. Word wrap allows containment of text within a box once the box is identified. If a word is entered that exceeds the limit of the box, the word drops to the next line. This is available only if word processor is selected in the preferences dialog text category text editor style option menu. Now, there are two text editors. There may be three. I'm trying to think of how this works. But the uh, other one is a dialog. It's not a WYSIWYG. It's a standard dialog. Most people are using this word processor text editor setup. But if you do want to change that, that's in Workspace Preferences under Text, Text Editor Style. There's a dialog, there's a key in, and then there's a word processor. Word processor is what I have it set for. There was a little while uh, ago, there was a problem with a uh, DHTML package and the way it interacted with the word processor, and you'd get this terrible uh, fatal error if you launched the word processor. And I recall the solution to that was setting the, the word processor, the text editor, preference to dialog. Uh, but now everything's fine, so please continue using the text editor. It's great. You'll notice the next option down is style, and that's where I talked about the f.styles. styles you should really be placing your text based on the f dot styles. You'll notice there's an f dot, f dot bold, f dot heavy, f dot monospaced, monospaced bold, monospaced heavy, vertical, and then masked. Masked has a little, um, little box behind it to mask out any lines that go under the text. I believe that's used by structures. If you're using these text styles, you'll notice that there is small, medium, and large. The small, medium, and large correspond to minimum, preferred, and maximum text size according to the CAD manual. So that's why there's a small, medium, and large. So select a text style. There is an active angle option, so you can place your text at an angle. By selecting an F dot text style, it's going to automatically populate the height and width. You'll be able to lock the annotation scale so it'll automatically scale correctly. Okay? And that's the way it should be. And you'll see that it, it'll set the font for you, it'll set the justification and the line spacing. These are all standards according to the CAD manual. All these text styles are already set up for you, so you really don't need to do, go in there and change text settings or change the text styles or create your own text styles. They're all already there for you. You notice there's an inter-character spacing. That's the spacing between the character, also known as kerning. There's a little bit of trivia that you know now. Let's talk about the word processor dialog itself. You'll see that it does have a selection of fonts in it, but when you select an F dot text style, it's going to populate that font for you. There is bold, italic, and underline options. There's a spell checker right here. There are stacked fraction options. So if you have, so let's just do what they have there, one half, select this, hit stacked fraction. You see when you actually enter a data point to place it, that's stacked fraction aligned to the bottom, like that. You can specify a color, but you should stick with the bi-level color. Uh, this is a really interesting drop-down here. This is the, a quick select drop-down for the 
extra symbols that we talked about earlier, such as center line, property line, baseline. All of those symbols are already in there for you and in a little drop down. They even have the little degree symbol. Right? That's easy, quick access to those characters. So when you need to place characters for baseline and center line and survey line, that's all in there. But you can also hit the insert symbol button and it'll show you a character map of all of the characters available in that font, including stacked fractions. So we've got some uh, really, really good stacked fractions like 47 64 That's oddly specific. So there you are. And if, if you notice, there's a button here for manage favorites so you can decide what characters you want as your favorite characters. And those characters will populate in this dropdown. So that's all there is to the word processor uh, and placing text. So the process for placing text, I'm going to demonstrate. Let me just go ahead and de demonstrate a real quick idea on the best way to do this. I'm going to create a new file. In fact, I'm going to create a, a plan sheet file. Now there's any number of places that you could place text. You could place text in your design file. You can place it in a text RD file to reference into your design file. Or you could place it directly in a sheet file. I'm going to place some text in a sheet file so you get an idea of how the correct way to place text works. So I've got a blank sheet file. And the first thing I'm going to do is you don't have to worry about referencing just yet or what it is but I am going to reference in my design file. We're talking about reference files a little bit later. I'm just going to do everything, just the defaults, just so I have something to point at to reference. I'm going to zoom in, find an interesting location here, and then I'm going to rotate my view. I don't have an alignment to reference to, so I'm just going to go ahead and find a couple of key points along this line. So I have an intersection here. This is my proposed design. I'm in a plan sheet. This is not how plan sheets are created, but it's a way to visualize for you. And I'm doing a 40 scale plan sheet. So let's just set things up for a 40 scale plan sheet. And we're going to ignore all of the elements on either side. I'll show you all about sheet clipping a little bit later on. But placing text is, is super easy with the textiles we, we set up for you. All right, so we're at a 40 scale. We've got annotation lock on. We've, we've selected a standard f dot medium font we have set our level to text miscellaneous because that's a great text level we have a number of different levels that are reserved for text and I'm going to set the drawing scale notice settings drawing scale this is what's also known as annotation scale Currently it's set to a 1 to 1. I said that I was going to be working at a 40 scale. Now the annotation scale is set to 40. You could do this in a text file. So if you had a text RD file that you're referencing in, you could place all your text in there and have it set for annotation so that it would scale up correctly. So here's the way text should look. You notice it's an f dot true type font. This is geopack text right here, so it looks a little bit different. But this is the f dot font. This is at the medium size at an annotation scale of 40 in an annotation uh, drawing of 40. If you were to print this out on 11 by 17, that would be a a correct size text to adhere to the standards specific text size. And that's all there is to placing text is select your text style, whether it's F dot heavy large and place it. Well, now wait a second. What if I want to change the case so it's all uppercase? That's this tool right here. I can select uppercase, select the text, it makes it uppercase. So I've incidentally just gone to the, directly to the next tool. So, so what about notes? Using the place note tool. You select your f dot text style. It's going to ask you to select a dimension style. There's only one dimension style to select. This is what governs the 
uh, style of the leader line and terminator error. We're selecting the f.dim, which is f.dimension dimension style for that leader. It sets your rotation, your frame, your height and width, okay, and also all your terminator settings are set. And to draw a note, you enter a data point where you want the terminator arrow to be, and then you place the text with a second data point. And you see it scales that terminator arrow. I know that looks rather small, but that's the size it's supposed to be at a 40 scale. So if you were to print that out at 11 by 17, it would look exactly correct. And again, whoops, I made it upper and lowercase. So if you want to make it all uppercase, choose that. And because I placed this with the annotation scale set, annotation lock on, let's say I change my mind, I want to do the sheet at a 50 scale. So I'm going to go ahead and just drop another sheet border in here at a 50 scale. You see that's a little bit bigger. Well, let's do an 80 scale. So here's an 80 scale sheet. And I'm going to get rid of that sheet border. That's a much bigger sheet and the text is going to print out very, very small if I don't scale it up. So I'm going to settings, drawing scale, and selecting, well there's not a 1 over 80, but oh, I can make one. Can't I? Yep, custom. And you see it scales up the text. So now this text will print at the correct size. It also scaled up that terminator arrow. So it'll print at the correct size when you print at 11 by 17 using this border. That is how you place text to f.standard. That's how you place a note. That's how you adjust your annotation scale. All right, so enter data fields. Enter data fields are essentially like a fill in the blank text option for MicroStation. We put a lot of them in our sheet borders. And I'm gonna turn on the, on the data fields here in view attributes. It's a view attributes thing that you can toggle on and off. And you just saw these lines appear down here. These are enter data fields, and you could, you could use the enter data field tools to fill them in. They're the enter data fields that are in the title block of a sheet border. However, you're not supposed to actually use the enter data field tools to do that. You should be using Sheet Navigator, which is a tool we developed specifically for labeling sheets and indexing sheets. It detects those enter data fields and fills them in for you. And it's a good way to automate that. So don't use the enter data field tools for the uh, title block labeling, unless you absolutely have to, and I can't think of a situation in which you'd absolutely have to. But I do know there are some enter data fields that you're supposed to fill out by hand in the uh, key sheet. So I'm going to go ahead and look for a key sheet. Uh, let's see, key sheets. And I'm going to pick the, well, just the lighting key sheet. And it drops it right there. So remember that problem we were talking about earlier about things that are way off the design plane? <laughs> That's the thing about that. Okay, so what do I see here for enter data fields? Construction contract number is an enter data field that's not filled in by Sheet Navigator. So let's go ahead and try to fill that in. I'm using the fill in single enter data field. I'm going to highlight that and put in one, two, three, four, five sounds like a great contract number and enter a data point. Now you see that enter data field has been edited. Where's another one? I know that the county fill is filled in by Sheet Navigator and so is the road number, um, but we can actually do those manually anyways. So I'll show you how to do that. Select the enter data field. It detects the enter data field. Whoops. Call this Leon County because that's where I am enter a data point and you notice that that enter data field is justified right so when that prints out it'll be right there in line with the text enter data fields are construction elements so they are not printed so you not see these underlines when you print your sheet they're there as a construction element so enter data fields are pretty easy to create um, you go to the place text tool type in some text and then you right click and select insert enter data field. This one's going to be blank. You can have enter data fields start out with text in them, but this one's going to be blank. It's going to be 12 characters long. I'm going to justify it left because it's going next to some left justified text. 
and I'm going to click OK. Now you can see it puts a bunch of underscores in there. They're not just underscores, it's actually special characters that represent the enter data field and the number of characters. I had to set my annotation scale for 5,280 because when I place this key sheet border, key sheets are at a very, very large scale to accommodate the key map, or at least a relative scale to the key map. So it actually ended up setting my the scale of this to be very large. So I had to, to set my drawing scale to 5,280, which is not a standard option. So just bear with me on this one. But now you can see the text. It's the right size. And that has an enter data field. I can select to fill the enter data field. Enter data point, And it fills in that enter data field interesting thing about enter data fields is they will have the same text attributes as the text that was used to place the enter data field. So if you placed f dot heavy large bold text as the text style for the enter data field, any text that gets entered into that enter data field will be that text style. We already discussed the find and replace text tool. Just give you a reminder, that's here. It works just like any sort of Windows find and replace. You can do find replace and replace all and there's some options like match case whole words so if you wanted it to specifically be a whole word and not just part of another word use regular expressions or in cells so if the text is in a cell it'll locate that and then of course animate and zoom was the options we had enabled so that it would locate our locate our alignment very dramatically okay exercise 10.1 We've opened up the text rd01 DGN that's located in your roadway folder of your data set. So locate your data set, the roadway folder, and open up text rd01. Now we've learned how to use saved view, so let's access the saved view for this exercise. You can open up the view attributes dialog from the top left corner of the view window. And if this section right here it says view setup is closed, go ahead and hit the down arrow. So you're looking at the view attributes dialog fully expanded, looking at the saved views drop down. You should see one that says using text tools. So go ahead and click on that. And that's going to bring us right to the section where we're doing our exercise. Now this just demonstrates some of the tools. It doesn't necessarily go through the f.workflow of placing text. You did see that earlier in the, um, the demonstration. So this is just going to demonstrate how to use some of the tools to edit text and to interact with text. So from the drawing task in the f.plans development workflow, right click in the text tools area and select open text as toolbox. And you should get that little toolbox right there. We're going to select the Place Text tool. You should see the Text Editor word processor as well as the tool settings for Place Text. Let's set our drawing scale for 50, 1 to 50, and turn on Annotation Lock. And from the Text Style, select F.Bold Medium. And we're going to type the phrase State of Florida. And strike enter. Type Department of Transportation. You should be rewarded with seeing the text on the end of the cursor, just like that. But that's not necessarily what we're looking for we want to have this centered. So let's check out the justification here. In the place text toolbox, set the justification to center center. And we want to get it centered in this box. We've used AccuDraw before. So snap to see how the origin point is now center center. Snap that to this line. Tap O, and that moves the compass. And we want to get it centered here. So the easiest way to do that is to snap down here, 
and you're going to tap the forward slash key, which is right to the left of your shift key. That brings up the AccuDraw calculator. Type them the number two, because we're dividing by two, and then enter a data point. There you go. You have placed text at a 50 scale in a 50 scale drawing using the F dot text style. Now there's another way to move that text into place that I'm going to show you real quick. So I'm going to just drag this arbitrarily out of place. Since this is a shape, it has a center. What we can do is use the move tool, locate that center origin. Alternatively, we can set origin snap and it's automatically going to get the origin of the text. That text origin functions as an origin that can be snapped to using the origin snap. Now it's defaulted back to key point snap, so let's change that to center snap. Now you see when I mouse over the edge of that shape, it automatically puts the text in the center of the shape. So there's two ways to do that. You saw how to do math with AccuDraw to place text, as well as using the different snaps. Now, you may run into a situation where you need to change the line spacing on a, um, a piece of text. So let's take a look. I think they're going to want us to change the line spacing on this. Select the Change Text Attributes tool. That's this one right here. Expand the window. The only thing we want checked is the line spacing. We're going to set that to 1. And this is the piece of text they want us to change the line spacing on. So you click on that and you notice the line spacing changed. So you see you can change just one text attribute. Okay, We're going to change the inter-character spacing of another piece of text. We're going to set the inter-character spacing. We're going to set the inter-character spacing to 0.25. And I can tell you right away it's going to be this piece of text. There you are. So you see you can change line spacing, inner character spacing for pieces of text. For example, if you want to do something wacky with this piece of text, even though it's already assigned a text style. So we can expand the inner character spacing. We're going to do a find replace text exercise. Now I know that we've done a lot of usage of the find text functionality to locate station numbers, but let's do some find replacing text. We're going to be replacing the character for baseline in all of these Geopack labels that have it incorrectly. That should be baseline, baseline symbol. There's a couple ways of, of doing this. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask the find replace text to find that symbol. That's the close brace symbol. So that's immediately to the right of your uh, backslash, depending on how your keyboard's set up. Slightly above the enter key, possibly. Uh, we're going to replace it with the baseline character, but how do we get the baseline character in there? Well, that's a good question. Let's find out. Easiest way to do that is to open up the place text tool and place the baseline character. Then highlight it. And you can either hit Control C or you can right click and select copy. Then you can just dismiss that tool. And in this field, you can right click and select paste or hit Control V to paste. Interestingly enough, we mentioned that the F dot font contains characters that are not included in most normal fonts. And the baseline character, of course, is not usually included in a normal font. What is included is the pound sterling symbol. And so the, the baseline character replaces the pound sterling symbol uh, in the F dot font. So when you paste it, paste the baseline as a uh, regular system font, it's going to show you the, the pound sterling symbol. But I guarantee you when we run this, it will uh, actually replace, replace it with the uh, baseline symbol. We're going to make sure this is in cells because I believe this is a cell. Yes, it is. And uh, that should be all we need to do. I'm going to hit replace all. And I've replaced 126 matches 
Look at that right there. So everything that had that weird little close brace symbol now has the baseline symbol. So now you've seen how to copy and paste special symbols and use them outside of just that drop down box. All right, exercise 10.3, data fields. We're going to go to the view attributes. Make sure data fields is turned on. In your view attributes, data fields is turned on. Next, we are going to go back to that using text tools saved view. So open up the view attributes and select using text tools. It's going to bring us back there. You'll notice we've got some data fields. Let's just look again at view attributes. If I toggle off data fields, see the text remains. It's just those little underlines that represent the data fields. And what they would like us to do is to create an, adi an additional enter data field. So let's see if this does this text have a style. So here we are. We're going to create an additional data field. First thing we're going to do is match text attributes. We could simply copy one of these but match text attributes and you'll see it has copied those text attributes. This is not using an f.txt style but it is using the f.font so it's close enough for this uh, exercise. And we're going to type in project number and then we want a three character enter data field. So you right click in the text editor window and select insert enter data field. You're going to tell it to be three characters and left justification. Once you do that, click the OK button. And there's your enter data field and why is my text so huge? See that? That's huge text. Well, this text wasn't actually placed using annotation scale and so when I had the annotation lock on it made the text really huge. You see the height is three. So Let's use this as our origin point. We have that, that left origin point. Make sure that AccuDraw has focus and you can tap O and now we have a way to line up that text. Let's just go ahead and drop it right there, kind of eyeball that. We're going to edit some enter data fields. Now you can select the fill in single enter data field tool. That's going to bring up this text editor. Simply select the entire line of text. It's going to detect that enter data field and then put one, two, three, enter a data point, select the next one, change it to two, three, four, enter a data point. You can put in whatever numbers you want. Select the next line of text, and then the final line of text that we created. Oops. There. Enter a data point and that finishes the enter data field. And that is all for chapter 10, drawing annotation.